What's going on everybody, Jolt here from the Tokyo Minorities and I am bringing you the week 5 match of the MPL this week against Lando Bandit and the Green Bay Palkias. Now this is a game that again I have been looking forward to for quite some time as he is one of the other coaches in my division and division matches are very important in the league in that if you win your division you're guaranteed a spot in the playoffs and considering the fact that everyone in my division has a 3-1 record going into, this, uh, going into this week, this game is a of utmost importance so I'm definitely uh, going to be preparing very carefully for this match to make sure that it come out on top so looking at his team as you can see right here he has Mew, Zapdos, Mamoswine, Keldeo, Hydreigon, Registeel, Snorlax, Quagsire, Darmanitan, and Whimsicott and of course Mega Aerodactyl to round it out so he has a very unique team yet it actually is very effective as well if you just look at his past few videos or his past few battles from previous weeks, he's he's done very well, he's planned very well, and he's he's played very well. So he, he's a threat. I, I can't deny that he is most definitely a threat. We have the same record, I believe he has a higher differential than I do going into this week. So I'm actually behind him in the standings, so I need to make sure to change that here after this week, and that is the plan. So just kind of going through some team analysis here, uh, notable threats are most definitely starting with the Mew, as Mew can do literally anything, and my team is just kind of naturally weak to psychic types, particularly offensive psychic types, so I'm going to have to prepare pretty carefully around the Mew, and uh, Mammoth Swine also could be a threat if I don't bring Skarmory, but uh, considering Skarmory's matchup against the remainder of his team is not too solid, I, it's kind of going to be difficult to prepare for Mammoth Swine. Zapdos can always be a threat just because it's so stupidly bulky and has the ability to pressure stall if it so chooses. Uh, Keldeo shouldn't be too big of an issue, but if it's, it manages to get a burn on Mega Venus or, or whatever my counter to Keldeo ends up being early, then it could be quite the nuisance and Hydreigon could also be a threat as well as Mega Aerodactyl for offensive and uh, for uh, for offensive reasons. So uh, his team's pretty full of threats, so I'm going to have to plan pretty carefully. Let's go ahead and jump over to the team building process. And I know last week I did mention that uh, I was going to try to split these videos up again uh, into one video for team building, one video for the actual battle. But the fact of the matter is, school is so ridiculous for me right now as a senior in college that I'm going to have to just make it one big video and just edit it render it and upload it all at one time so that's going to be how we're going to proceed throughout the rest of the season at least until the playoffs and if I do manage to make the playoffs then I'll probably change my uh, my procedure a little bit in that regard but let's go ahead and jump over to the team building process all right so first things first when I began building my team I looked for things on my team that would be pretty big threats to him either defensively or offensively and the two biggest things that came to mind were actually my newest free agency pickup Gastrodon whom I just dropped uh, Tornadus I for in at the end of the previous week and also Terrakion as if I give Terrakion a life orb it's actually able to two hit KO anything on my opponent's team um, with close combat on the switch in turn and then the appropriate coverage move on the second turn so Terrakion's an enormous offensive threat to his team and Gastrodon really walls the majority of his mons of course with the exception of those that might carry hidden power grass or some other random grass type move so keeping that in mind I'm going to kind of build around those two but I'll begin with the wall core that I think is going to be most effective in this game and in order to have an effective wall core you have to make sure that his wall breakers would not be able to break through my wall core so with that in mind I had to keep close tabs on both Mew and Darmanitan and Keldeo um, as those three I guess Aerodactyl as well as those four Pokemon are going to be his best Best wall breakers and I need to make sure that I prepare accordingly for those so I started off with Clefable with a calm nature mixed defenses this is very similar to the standard Clefable set that you would see every day on the ladder and the goal of this set is basically to be my all-purpose check to Mew as my team is very 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 weak to Mew if I do not bring an unaware Clefable with mixed defenses in this game, as Mew will have to run a choice item to be able to 2 hit KO me with anything outside of Gunk Shot. I think Gunk Shot with the Life Orb would still 2 hit KO uh, this spread, but anything else would not be able to 2 hit KO me. So I felt that Clefable was absolutely my best option to combat an offensive Mew. 
and if he does decide to run a defensive Mew, then, well, that's not exactly as much of a threat, considering I do have the potential to bring many sweepers, and if I can burn a defensive Mew, it's going to be much easier to handle as well, and I'll have plenty of things that can do that. So, uh, I believe just having this Clefable and then a good amount of, or some good supporting mods will be enough to allow me to beat the Mew, and that's the main purpose for bringing this here. And uh, the moveset, very standard. I'm running Thunder Wave just in case it is an offensive Mew, as slowing down an offensive Mew is very, very important for my team, as uh, I want my wall core to be able to outspeed it. And if it is a defensive Mew, if I can paralyze that, then it won't be able to, to taunt, to outspeed me and taunt me and uh, ruin my day. So that's the idea with the Cliff Fable. Next up, we have Groot the Mega Venusaur. This time will be a special defensive variant, such that it is a pretty perfect switch into Keldeo, it is a pretty perfect switch into Hydreigon, those are the two main things that I wanted to wall with this set, and it happens to wall Whimsicott very well as well, and I know that Michael loves to bring offensive Whimsicott, he's brought it at least three of the past four weeks, maybe even all four, I'm not exactly sure, but this set handles offensive Whimsicott quite well. Yes, it can run Psychic, yes, it can run Hurricane, but when I'm Mega Evolved, I cannot be 2 hit KO'd by Psychic, and if I'm Mega Evolved, I mean, I can be 2 hit KO'd by Hurricane, but it's not exactly the best odds of hitting two Hurricanes in a row, so Venusaur is very, very good in this matchup, especially for the Whimsicott and the Keldeo. It's also a pretty good answer to the Zapdos, and uh, Leech Seed, of course, will help against the majority of his team, as is only switching to Leech Seed is Whimsicott, which I can peg with other moves. So, then, the next mod on my defensive core is this Gastrodon. Now, this is primarily going to be my, uh, my answer to Mega Aerodactyl and my answer to Snorlax, I guess Darmanitan as well, so those three are the main things that this is going to be countering in this game, as Scald will be, I believe, a guaranteed Oko on the Darmanitan, maybe, a guaranteed 2 kill at least, I think it might be guaranteed Oko, at least very close, um, so that'll be a good answer to the Darm, and then the Clear Smog will help out against the Snorlax in case he wants to start going for curses, which if he brings Snorlax, that's what he's going to do because that's going to be an attempt to break through my wall core. And with an Underwear Clefable and a Clear Smog Gastronaut, I'm not concerned about that whatsoever. So that's the idea with that. And uh, yeah, Scald and Ice Beam are just the appropriate coverage for his team. And this will be my primary switch into Mega Aerodactyl and should prevent it from being too much of a threat. Uh, this game. So that's the defensive core. Now I turn to my offenses and as I mentioned earlier I saw that Terrakion was very good on his team holding a life orb. So that's what I decided to do in this game. I considered running stealth rocks on this but just due to the offensive prowess of Terrakion in this particular game I didn't see myself actually laying stealth rocks with it. So I decided to just run sword stance on the off chance that I'm able to set up a sword stance and I outspeed the rest of his team then hey it's an easy sweep. Although in hindsight it really wasn't necessary considering like I said before, I can to a KO absolutely anything on his team. Even a Mew, uh, if it's offensive, cannot switch in on a close combat and still survive in a life or boosted X Scissor. So, a uh, Terrakion is very, very good in this matchup, and I'm expecting it to put in quite a bit of work. And there's really not much else to say. It's a very strong Pokemon in this matchup. Now, next up, I am bringing Alakazam, which I forgot to nickname this week. It <laughs> should be Professor X. It's going to be his first appearance this season on the Toronto Star Raptor, so I'm definitely excited to see what kind of work it does. And it has an incredible matchup against Michael's team, as its coverage options are phenomenal, and Michael does not have a good switch into it. His best switch ins could be a special defensive Mew, or I guess Registeel, and maybe Snorlax. Registeel and Snorlax. Both are pegged by Focus Blast, and Shadow Ball will hit Mew in addition to, of course, my Clefable being my all-purpose switch into the Mew anyways. So, I think that Alakazam is going to put in a tremendous amount of work in this game. I am running a Focus Sash this week instead of a Life Orb because it is kind of necessary to have this extra check to Aerodactyl. In case for some reason I let my Gastrodon get status, maybe by a, uh, I don't know, maybe it gets burned by something? I, I don't know. Uh, things can happen to Gastrodon. This is going to be basically my secondary uh, counter check. Secondary check to the Mega Aerodactyl, or one of my checks to the Mega Aerodactyl. I'll show you my next one here in a second. But yeah, I think this will be pretty good in this game. And then the last mod that I'm bringing this week is Black Widow, the Greninja, on a Choice Scarf this week. Because with a Choice Scarf, it is able to outspeed and do about 85% to Mega Aerodactyl with Scald, so that's pretty good. I strongly considered bringing Surf in this matchup, but I thought that his most likely switch into this would be the Registeel, and I 
quite frankly need a burn on Registeel with Skull from either this or from Gastrodon to be able to wear it down effectively with anything besides Terrakion. So that was the idea behind using Skull. And I also very, very strongly believe that this is going to be perhaps the best possible anti-lead I can bring against Michael's team in that he likely will bring Darmanitan against me because Darmanitan is probably the best wall breaker on his team, especially against mine. And, uh, on Choice Scarf, I outspeed Choice Scarf Garmanitan, and I Oko with Scald, so I'm expecting that to be turn one of our game. I'm hoping that that's going to be turn one of our game, as no matter what he brings, I am leading Greninja. It has a great matchup against his entire team, and if I don't like the matchup, I can very easily just U-turn out into the appropriate counter. So that's the team. I'm, I'm feeling very confident in this team. Um... I, I like my matchup, although if he brings certain threats, then of course I could struggle because his team is very good, it's very diverse, and I can definitely see him bringing things that I might struggle with, but I think I prepared as best I could for this game. I am ready to go improve my differential and my record and maybe slide into first place in my division. So here we go, let's jump into the battle. I will be right back. Alright, so looking at team preview, he did basically bring... Pretty much the exact same mons that I thought he would bring in this game, with the exception of the Mamoswine. I didn't really think that Mamoswine had the best matchup against my team, because if you just kind of look at what I brought, uh, Greninja eats up an Ice Shard, Alakazam can take an Ice Shard and KO with Focus Blast, Terrakion can just Oko Mamoswine, Gastrodon's kind of threatened by a Life Orb Freeze Dry, but I do have enough Spadef to be able to live it guaranteed and dish a big amount of damage with Scald. Venusaur just beats Mamoswine and Clefable's not threatened by it either, so I didn't really think it was his best option to bring in this game, as really not much on my team was threatened by it. So that was just my thought. I guess he brought it for Dragonite, and that's fine, but I think he should have brought maybe a Defogger in that slot like Zapdos, as Zapdos could have been a nuisance for my team if played properly. So that's just kind of my thought at Team Preview. Now I am expecting him to lead either with Mega Aerodactyl or Darmanitan as I mentioned earlier and with that in mind I'm going to lead with my anti-lead Greninja. So let's go ahead and jump into this as he does lead with his Darmanitan which is pretty awesome because I'm pretty sure he's just going to try to go for the U-turn and he does do just that and I'm able to go for the Skull and take out the Darmanitan on turn one. It's going to be a six to five game from the get-go, which is absolutely fantastic. Now, here he makes a nice play, predicting me to go into my Mega Venus sort of try to eat up anything from Whimsicott. It just goes for the Psychic. He gets this Medef drop, which is kind of unfortunate because now I'm going to be forced to switch out into something, knowing that the Psychic, even after I Mega Evolve, will be able to take me out. But I'm just going to my Greninja, knowing it is pretty safe, as I can't be harmed by Psychic, and I have a good matchup against the rest of his team. And I predict the switch into his Registeel. I'm just going to go for the U-turn, as that will allow me to get a free switch into my Terrakion, which is a free close combat. And if you look at his team, what is his switch into Life Orb Terrakion, he doesn't have one. Unless this is an impish defensive Mew, he does not have a switch into this Terrakion, and he is going to get blown back by this close combat, and I'm going to be off to an early 6-4 to four advantage in this game, and it's only turn 6. This is absolutely fantastic. I am going to have to play pretty poorly to screw this up, I think, at this point. Here he goes into his Mew, and I'm just going to go into my all-purpose counter, the Clefable. I guess the check is can't really KO Mew, but regardless. Uh, just go into my Clefable, I'm going to eat up the Energy Ball. I guess he was predicting the Gastrodon to be my special defensive wall in this game and that is just not the case as uh I'm going to just wish up and kind of scout for what he wants to do. Here I'm just going to be uh, wish protecting a little bit, just seeing if he has something to hit me super effectively. And if he does have it, he's bound to reveal it soon because the Clefable is going to get on his nerves. And uh, he just keeps going for Psychic and Energy Ball. So I'm assuming that his move slide is something along the lines of Psychic, Energy Ball, maybe Shadow Ball. Um, I, I don't really know what his last move option is. I, I thought he would have Roost if he's Life Orb. I, I just don't know what his last move is. But regardless... Uh, Clefable's going to be able to stall this out for days, so that's kind of awesome. And he's just going to go for the Roost here as I set up another Wish, and now I have the option of switching into really anything I want, but I do kind of expect him to try to switch out into something else, trying to gain Switch Advantage, and I'm just going to go for the Moonblast to try to hit whatever comes in, and it happens to be the Mammoth Swine, which is pretty awesome because I'm going to be able to break the potential Focus Sash here, which makes it really even less of a threat. With it being at 56%, even if it's a Sash Endeavor variety, it's not going to be able to be super effective against my Wall Core, so that's pretty awesome. Now here, I'm just going to go ahead and go for the Protect on the Mammoth Swine, Scouting for Iron Head, and then go for the Protect on the incoming Whimsicott, Scouting for Switcheroo, and he does reveal Switcheroo here, and predicting him to predict my switch into Mega Venusaur, I'm going to go into my Greninja to hit the incoming Mega Aerodactyl, and that works out pretty well as well, so I'm playing pretty well this game as far as my predictions are concerned, and it's going to pay off here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pause briefly, as if you look at the damage from the Mega Aerodactyl, that did 
really zero to my Greninja, which has no HP or defense investment whatsoever. So that fact tells me that I don't think this Mega Aerodactyl is invested in attack at all, which makes me kind of wonder what it is invested in, you know? Considering the Skull did do roughly the amount of damage that my calc indicated for an offensive Mega Aerodactyl, so I'm kind of wondering if he maybe forgot EVs in this game, or if I got a high roll against the max HP, max speed Mega Aerodactyl. That's also a possibility, but the fact remains that it did not take much damage on the Mega Aerodactyl, and that tells me that my Gastrodon's going to be able to wall it very well here later in the game. Now here I'm going to go for the Skull because I have no reason not to, and I'm fortunate enough to get the burn on the incoming Whimsicott, which is pretty awesome as this Whimsicott has no means of recovery, and I don't have to really fear it at all. So here I go into my, go into my Mega Venusaur, as it's really only here to counter the Whimsicott at this point, as the rest of my team can handle the rest of his team pretty well, and he makes a nice double into his Mew, I guess predicting that switch. But uh, with that, I'm still going to go into my Clefable as it's free. I don't think he has anything to hit my Clefable, and it's it's free. <laughs> so uh, here he goes into his Mega Aerodactyl, predicting the wish with, with my Clefable, which is pretty smart. But I'm going to go ahead and scout for the Iron Head and just play it safe, I guess, and go into my Gastrodon as, like I said before, considering the lack of attack investment on this Mega Aerodactyl, this Gastron should be able to just come in and sit against it and really not worry whatsoever. So now we're at an even better position at 6-3. to three. He's going to go into his Mew. Now here I am expecting him to try to predict my switch into my Clefable and go for the 2 at KO with Psychic. So I'm going to go ahead and sack my Gastrodon here. Just going for a last ditch effort Skull, trying to get the burn on the Mew. And fortunately enough, I do get the burn, although I don't think it really mattered at this point because now I can just go into my Alakazam and basically clean up this game as he has nothing left that can switch in against me as I can just go for the Shadow Ball here pretty freely against the Mew as he goes into his Whimsicott and he's going to die to the burn damage and then he's going to go into Mammoth Swine the best he can do is go for an Ice Shard and that'll do nothing <laughs> to me and I'll be able to KO that with a Psychic and then he'll go into Mew and promptly die to the Shadow Ball so that will be the game we have escaped this matchup with a 5-0 victory against Michael Lando Bandit and the Green Bay Palkias and this this is pretty big because now we're in a good position in my division. I think I think after this week I might have slid up to num the number one position in my division, which is pretty awesome considering how intense my division really is. Everyone in my division is a good player, and it's going to be a fight to the finish, which is pretty fun. I'm definitely excited to see how the rest of the season plays out in that regard. So, great game, Michael. That was a fun match. You played well, and uh, maybe you'll get me next time. We'll see. But thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you will join me again next week as we take on Slick Rick Nixon and the Chicago Sacred Fire and his uh, Sticky Web offense team with Mega Heracross. So that's going to be kind of fun to prepare for. I'm not exactly sure what my best options are in that game, but I'll, uh, I'll be working on it, of course, throughout the week. So I hope you enjoyed, guys. I will see you next week. Peace.